bold and extremely fun. It's Sunrise with Craig Vronick right here on KCMX AM 880. Lively conversations around news, politics, and people, plus local news and weather every 30 minutes. We want to hear from you. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, or go to kcmxam.com. Join in the conversation by calling 541-772-8255. Sunrise, where it matters what you think. Everybody. Welcome to the Sunrise Show, seven minutes after the hour. Glad you're with us this morning, about 62 degrees, going to get to 76 today. So, And they're talking about intermittent rain throughout, and I'm happy about that. I'll take every drop of rain I can get my hands on. Well, want to welcome into the studio Dr. Sean Sills. He's the medical director and board certified in anesthesiology. He's an MD. He's uh, interventional pain management and, of course, founder and owner of uh, Touchstone Pain, Southern Oregon's Pain Relief and Wellness Recovery Center. They're over on Siskiyou Boulevard in Medford, and the phone number over there, 541-773-1435. And uh, Dr. Sean Mills is in the studio. Thrilled to have him in. How are you, sir? Hey, good. Good morning, Craig. How are you? Great. Uh, so a lot of things go on at the Wellness Recovery Center. Uh, you know, stand uh, pain, uh, you do all types of of modalities but one of the things that we want to talk about today is uh, addiction recovery and this is you are mostly focused on opiate addiction recovery right yes that's correct and and so uh, and we we talked a little bit about it because it, it kind of all of a sudden you get into all these drugs and and how people's lives are so affected I mean there's a lot of pain in people's lives mm -hmm. whether it's mental or physical or you know baggage and I think one of the things that they don't, we all don't acknowledge is that we as humans are fragile. Yeah. And, and so you reach for something, you reach for a vice, you reach for something. If you're, if you're struggling, it could be your, you know, your drug of choice, they called it. I mean, you could, be, you could reach for a bag of potato chips. You could reach for a deluxe size one pound chocolate bar, you know, <laughs> or you could reach for something even more drastic, uh, opiates and that kind of thing, and, and illegal drugs, and then, then they're addicted. And it's then what? Yeah, there's a couple ways that people get addicted to pain medication or opiate medications. One is you have chronic pain, or you, you, you have an accident, and your doctor prescribes you medications, and um, after a couple weeks, couple months, your brain really starts to like the way that medication makes you feel, and probably a third of patients that develop opiate addiction actually comes from prescriptions from doctors. Um, probably the other third are just, uh, you know, in our early teens, early 20s, people start experimenting with medications or drugs and, um, and then they get their opiates off the street. We're seeing um, a lot of opiate addiction, especially uh, heroin abuse in the last five years where heroin's become very uh, cheap, the world production of uh, heroin has oh, increased. Oh, I know. I've seen that. Where, yeah, so they're going to move toward the heroin. Does that higher on the addiction ladder? It is, because the, the heroin is, you can smoke it, you can inject it, and it hits the, the brain so fast. It hits that reward system. And what happens in addiction is the, the drugs basically hijack the reward system and oh, hijack wow. the rest of your brain. So you actually... Uh, start having behaviors that you can't control. Wow. Uh, do Dr. Sills, we've got a, a phone number. Yeah. Well, actually, a phone call, rather. Let's grab that. Good morning. You're live on the Sunday. <laughs> oh, we lost it. Interesting. Huh. All right. Uh, okay. Caller, if you want to call back, uh, check it. We've got the lines open, 541-772-8255. And we're talking to Dr. Uh, Sean Sills uh, with Touchstone Pain. And you can go to touchstonepain.com. Uh, fantastic website, by the way. It's, I mean, interventional procedures, pain medication, radio frequency, ablations, neuromodulation, implantable devices. You've just got it all going on. Uh, but 
I mean, you know, spine pain, that's huge. Yeah. Uh, the nerves and muscles around the spine, that's got to be, and, you know, spinal cord. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, and I found out, you know, I found this out later in life, that the spinal cord and the brain stem is a complete separate pressure than the body pressure, blood pressure of your body. Yeah, it's, it's pressurized and it's sealed, correct? Yep. And so that's why when you have any type of pressure on that spinal cord in any way, shape, or form, it changes the pressure within that spinal cord. Yeah, some patients actually have increased pressure in that cerebral fluid, and that'll cause headaches and all sorts of different symptoms. That was just, yeah, that's just amazing. So uh, related to addiction recovery, I love your four pillars you have. Um, do we want to talk about that? Yeah, let's talk about it. There's basically four pillars that we use to treat opiate addiction. The first pillar is a medication assistance. And what we do in our clinic is we use Suboxone as a bridge to recovery. So Suboxone is a medication that um, it's an opiate, it's a partial opiate, but typically on average, the withdrawals off of Suboxone are a lot less severe than the withdrawals off of typical opiates. So what we do is we have a tapering protocol. We'll, we'll take a patient who's on heroin, oxycodone, and we'll do an induction with Suboxone and it'll stabilize them and it'll take them out of that withdrawal state. And then over a course of several weeks, several months, we'll taper that Suboxone. And while we taper the Suboxone, we work uh, on building a recovery program. So we do that with a couple different other pillars for recovery. One pillar is 12-step facilitation. So what that is is 12-step uh, meetings, AA meetings, NA meetings, because they've got to get their mind wrapped around all this, right? Yeah. I mean, mind over matter. It's, I mean, it's well, it's more than physio physiological dependence. There's a psychological aspect. And so we want to get to some of those issues. The 12-step program is one of those things that has been shown uh, to be beneficial for not only alcoholics, but also patients that are addicted to opiates. And so we plug you into a recovery community. Um, the third pillar that we use is, is con uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. It's basically counseling. And we have a therapist, Siri Ulrich. He's been in addiction for 30 years. Right. And he'll do individual and group sessions, and he'll use something called motivational enhancement theory to help bo build internal motivation for change. And then the last pillar is um, what we call contingency management. And what that is, is we monitor you, and um, there's negative and positive reinforcement for your urine drug screens. If you turn positive, that's a good thing. You get rewarded. If you have a negative urine drug screen, well, there's consequences. And that, that actually, that fourth pillar is, is really critical to a successful program. It, it holds accountability, doesn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Sills, we have a phone call coming in. Let's okay. grab that. Good morning. You're live on the Sunrise Show. Who's this? Craig, it's Matt. Hey, pal. Hey, yeah. I have a, a suggestion um, of making people that are quadriplegics walk and people that are blind see. They've already invented the cochlear implant, so that's already been, and now right. they've got them to where they can replace them. They can do them with, uh, if you have nerve damage. Originally they couldn't, but now they do. But um, if a person, let's say, if they get injured in an accident, let's say, and like the, like, like the late Christopher Reed's, Right, right. And if they have a neck injury, I think a cool solution to that would be to put, like, and I'm going to talk to OYT about this when they open up in the fall again, they said to call back, and I could work with this, work, work with the electrical and the chemical uh, departments on this. They said that, um, well, I, I was thinking perhaps we could put, like, a, like, a, like a electrical conduit around the spine and then um, fill it with, like, a fluid type of a thing, because you know how the spine's a fluid, and then... Um, run a battery in the top of it, like run some electrodes to the top, and it could have a rechargeable battery, and it would, and it could, uh, it could conduct movement that way. Matt, do you have a question for, I mean, I'm sure Dr. Sills will comment on that. Yeah. Um, go, go ahead, Matt, uh, not, hold on. Not specific, well, actually, I kind of do. It's about, it's about pentothals and propothols. Yes. Uh, what's the difference between propothols and pentothols? Now, I know that they have gases, that, but that's pretty much all I know. Propofol is a unique agent. It's an induction agent that we use for sleep. That was the agent that Michael Jackson ended up overdosing ah, from. Ah, exactly. Yeah. Pentothol is basically a uh, barbiturate, and it's another induction agent that uh, anesthesiologists use to put you to sleep for surgery. But this topic of uh, electrical stimulation, that actually is something that's been done, is being done, and is being looked at not only to treat 
chronic pain, but also addiction. Addiction is a compulsive disorder, and what they found um, is that there's certain parts of the brain that if you electrically stimulate, you can greatly relieve uh, uh, compulsive disorders. For instance, deep brain stimulation for obsessive compulsive disorder. Say wow. you have this disorder where you, you can't stop uh, washing your hands, and you leave your house and you come right back because you have to wash your hands. Uh, neurosurgeons have actually placed electrodes deep in the brain, and by stimulating different portions of the brain, been able to get patients to stop that obsessive compulsion. That's so amazing. There's hope that maybe for addiction, maybe one day, that would be something that would be a partial cure. But for right now, there's there's nothing that's out there to mm -hmm. cure. Well, I, uh, I don't addiction. I don't mean to, to do it that way. I mean to make like quadriplegics walk and be able to use their arms and legs to get stuff oh. through yeah. through like an electrical conduit that could be stimulated. You know, that's a very thought. possible. Yeah. Very possible. Matt, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. You bet. Thank All right. You. Uh, we have a break. We got to get get to. We've got Dr. Sean Sills in the studio with us this morning. He's with Touchstone Pain. You can go to touchstonepain.com. It's Southern Oregon's Pain Relief and Wellness Recovery Center. And we'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Sunrise will return in a moment on KCMX News Talk 880. A little bold and extremely fun, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m. on KCMX AM 880. Lively conversations around news, politics, and people, plus local news and weather every 30 minutes. Here's Craig. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. 21 minutes after the hour and uh, thrilled to have in the studio with us this morning, Dr. Sean Sills, and he's an MD. He's also uh, the medical director for uh, Touchstone Pain, Southern Oregon's Pain Relief and Wellness Recovery Center. We're talking about uh, what they do over there at Touchstone Pain. You, you need to check this out. Touchstonepain.com is an amazing website, Dr. Sills, and, and everything that's going on over there because it addresses all of the issues. I mean, A through Z, I can't imagine anybody having any pain and coming in and just calling you and you saying, I can't help you. I mean, you've got something for them, whether it's, I mean... Yeah, absolutely. Gosh. I think we have uh, all sorts of different options for patients, from uh, injections to minimally invasive procedures to acupuncture to counseling to lifestyle modification to um, different manual therapies medications yeah i you know you know uh, dr sills in your line of work you probably I, i'm guessing here but you deal with people on a regular daily basis that that they are struggling that willpower yeah willpower because it could be i mean we talk about the drug of choice it, whether it's a chocolate bar or a bag of chips or you know uh umpteen beers or anything else harder drugs and that uh you know and they're facing down pain and they have that willpower of slamming their fist on the table as I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, yeah. and they get to the end of their rope and whether they can't walk or they, they can't stay focused, any number of things, I mean, you see that all, right? So you kind of, that's got to be, it. I mean, it's got to be rewarding, but it's also got to be frustrating. I mean, you share their frustrations. Yes. Yeah, willpower, um, especially with addiction, is just not enough. And um, I know this from my own personal experience. I developed an opiate addiction six years ago, went through uh, a nasty divorce, and took my skills as an anesthesiologist and, and numbed my brain. And, and You had that cabinet right there, huh? I, I had the keys to the candy Oh, my <laughs> box. gosh. So yeah. I uh, spiraled out of control, and that's, you know, before going through that experience, I really didn't understand addiction. But in addiction... There's a powerlessness. There's a loss of control. I had willpower. I've pulled hundreds of all-nighters. I've got uh, straight A's in high school, summa cum laude in, in, in college, and highest in my medical school class, and top 1% on my boards. Like, I knew willpower, but when it came to the disease of addiction, my willpower, my intelligence, my religious beliefs, all that just couldn't help me. Well, and this was a pain that you, number one, didn't know was going to happen. Yeah. You were stuck in it. You could, no one could really help you, no matter what, because you're the one. I mean, I, I get that. I've been through divorce. I understand. And the issue is, you're left holding the bag. At the end of the day, you know, you're crawling yeah. into bed at night. You're by yourself. You, you know, you cr the next day, right, you get up. Out of, I mean, it's you. You own it. You have it. And to have to face that is 
obviously hurts. And you, with all of your training, I mean, here you are, highly intelligent, and, and worked, I mean, you've been trained through that. And so you had to have been going through a great tussle knowing everything that you know. And I've been watching my own son. He just took his boards yeah. yesterday, right. believe it or not, all day. But I mean, how he's been studying through that and then to know all of those things, but yet you still had that pain and you reached for an antidote. Yeah. If they call it in recovery pitiful and incomprehensible demoralization. When you're doing what you don't want to do and you can't stop, you feel so helpless. I remember the despair, and what was fortunate for me is I did get into recovery, and I learned the recovery tools, and now I can take those failures and that experience and help others. And that's what we do at our wellness center is we get it. You know, when that patient comes to us and they're hooked on heroin and they're hooked on pain medicines, I mean, I know what a, uh, opioid withdrawal is. It, it's terrible. I mean, it's the, the, the way that you read it in the books of flu-like symptoms. I, it's, you feel like you're going to die. And so I've been there, and I've developed tools of recovery. And so what I do is they say that you can only keep what you give away. So wow. really working with patients in recovery is also something I do for myself. Because it's therapeutic for yourself, yeah, absolutely. It is. It's for me. But... Siri and, and myself and also one of the other providers with us, we're all in recovery, and so we get it. And so that's why I think we offer something unique is, is we understand it from the physician side, but we also understand it from the patient side. You know, Dr. Sills, uh, and if you're just joining us, we've got Dr. Sills with uh, Touchstone Pain, and Southern Oregon's uh, Pain Relief and Wellness Recovery Center in the studio this morning. And, uh, you know, Dr. Sills, that next thing of, of knowing that it's a dead-end road, that that had to have been the precipice for you. Of, you, say, you said to yourself, finally, I have to get off this train. This yeah. is going to kill me. And the pain is pain, and the drug is a, sh is a short relief, but the ride, it's a dead-end road. i got to get off. Yeah, at some point, uh, the first step in recovery is coming to that realization when you hit a bottom. And, uh, you know, for every addict, uh, that bottom can be at a different level. Uh, for me, I hit a bottom sufficient for recovery where I just, I just couldn't keep going that way. So yeah. I um, sought help and I got help, and I'm so lucky and thankful today well, that I. Well, exactly, and you didn't get into big trouble, right? You didn't lose your certifications, right? You're no. still able to practice medicine. I mean, you, you think about what you have, and then you think about what you could have lost, and maybe that's the turning point, huh? Yeah, I used to regret my failures. I used to look at my failures as just failures. But now I see my failures as treasures because it's those very failures that allow me to relate to people that, you know, I would never relate it to. If I wouldn't have gone through the experience that I went through, I wouldn't be here talking to you. I wouldn't be offering recovery uh, to uh, patients in our valley. And, you know, this is such a common disease. Everybody has is affected by this. There's your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your kid, your cousin. Like addiction is so prevalent that, um, and with the rise in heroin abuse and, and pain, misuse of pain medication, I think it's a much needed service. And so we're happy to step in and try to help our community. Yeah, this is great. And, uh, you know, Dr. Seals, this is uh, really, really fascinating because this is that tip of the iceberg related to everything. I mean, the, you know, we talk about uh, societal issues in our community, lack of funding for law enforcement. We we're just talking about the jails, you, you know, over in Josephine County and Crook County. It's happening all over, mm -hmm. and people are hurting all mm -hmm. over. That's, that's the essence. That's the ultimate piece is that people are hurting, and they need help. And where do they go to get help? Are mm -hmm. they able to do it through self-sufficiency? Are they able to get help through their neighbor? Or, or do they have to depend on the government? And I don't think people like to say, you know, I'm going to go get a handout somewhere. Mm -hmm. I'm going to depend on the government. So the ne the step is they need to make the call, right? Mm -hmm. They've got to call somebody. They could call you. Uh, here's the phone number, 541-773-1435. That's for um, Touchstone Pain. And they can talk to anybody there and just ask and say, hey, I'm, I need to talk to somebody. And Yeah. People are just suffering, and when you're suffering, you're trying to ease that suffering, and, and sometimes we reach for the wrong thing. So, yeah, they can, um, for our wellness center, uh, we take patients just off the street. So just call. If you have, you know, a son, daughter hooked on heroin, hooked on pain medicine, and you don't know what to do or how to help them, and they're at that point where they're done with the craziness, yeah, call our number. We have um, 
somebody who'll do a telephone screen will get you right in right away and and help you out yeah you've got to address it because you've got to know that it's a dead-end road well dr seals this is fascinating and the four pillars of addiction recovery that you deal with of course medication facilitated treatment cognitive behavioral therapy 12-step facilitation and contingency management and monitoring and i'll tell you what anyone that is considering or have any questions you should go to the website touchtonepain.com uh, it, it's fascinating because it, 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 everything is laid out there. There's videos there. There's, you, can, you can even do it, questions related right there on the website. It's very uh, informative and very easy. And uh, Dr. Sills, thanks for everything you do. And it's great to have you in the studio this morning. Thanks, Greg. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, this is just fascinating. I mean, we could go on and on because uh, with all of the issues, this is a huge issue in the community. And I'm, I'm so glad that you're in the trenches doing what you do. Thanks. All right, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Sunrise will return in a moment on KCMX News Talk 880.